Member statements. The Kiwetnong. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, on um, September 20th, I spoke about uh, Carlina Kamenwaterman, uh, a 13-year-old girl from uh, Berska Lake who had taken her own life. At that time, I also said that uh, Carlina's death uh, was related to a health crisis, a mental health crisis, uh, and then a crisis related to intergenerational trauma and a housing crisis. I had an opportunity to uh, visit uh, Bearskin Lake uh, over the weekend uh, after the tragedy and saw the many things which uh, I think are important to share at, in this house today. Not only did uh, Carlina uh, and her family live in a house which uh, was run down, but uh, her family home had no running water and no electricity, very limited electricity. Uh, simple things that we take for granted in most homes in Ontario, like cook, cooking meals on the stove, keeping food in the uh, fridge, were not possible in, 20, uh, in 2018, Speaker. Uh, lack of running water meant the family had to rely on water uh, from other homes in order to bathe, wash dishes, to flush toilets, etc. Uh, conditions many Ontarians would consider that, uh, uh, to exist only in third world. Uh, to make matters worse, uh, Carlina's uh, family had moved out into uh, and moved into uh, seven uh, uh, at a home seven years before uh, electricity had already been shut off in many of the areas of this address. Uh, a reason is just address. So I'm left to wonder, whereas in Ontario, would such conditions be tolerated? Thank you. Member statements. Member for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Tomorrow morning, I have the honour of hosting the seventh annual reception for the Canadian Cancer Survivor Network, CCSN, here at Queen's Park. I have attended Canadian Cancer Survivor Network events here at Queen's Park in the past, and as you will see tomorrow, they are a great resource for cancer patients and survivors in Ontario. Patients, caregivers and survivors from all over Ontario will be attending, and I look forward to meeting all MPPs and to share their experiences while living with and beyond cancer. Canadian Cancer Survivor Network works to promote educational activities for cancer patients, caregivers, and survivors on the impacts of cancer. They also empower patients, families, and communities by providing access to related counselling, information, and support group programs. This year, they are bringing to all MPPs general awareness and understanding of biologic and biosimilar drugs. These medicines provide patients with more choices for their cancer treatments and are also an opportunity for potential savings in the Ontario health care system, since some biosimilars will be more affordable for cancer patients. I also want to recognize Jamie Maghop, Director of Public Policy at the Canadian Cancer Survivor Network, and Doug Nugent with Prostate Cancer Canada Network Ottawa, a patient advocate and prostate cancer survivor. They're here in the gallery today and look forward to meeting many of us tomorrow. Please join me in congratulating the Canadian Cancer Survivor Network for all the great work they do. I invite all, everyone to come by, all MPPs, to come by the breakfast reception tomorrow in room 228 from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today in my riding of Kitchener Centre, people are excited as they take part in celebrations like Oktoberfest and Homecoming. And while I look forward to joining them all on Friday, I'm also aware that this time on university and college campuses sees a dangerous spike in sexual assaults, especially when alcohol is invo involved in the celebration. Organizations like the Shore Centre, which is the Centre for Sexual Health, Options, Resources and Education, remain concerned that people have not been taught about affirmative consent or the role that alcohol plays in consent. Both topics have been removed from the interim sexual health curriculum, which is being used in Ontario today. This is not only worrisome, but it's also extremely dangerous. Today, I'm standing in the House to call on the Premier and the members of the Conservative Caucus to do things differently. I'm asking each of you to take concerns around sexual and gender-based violence seriously. Building a culture of consent takes real work. It takes real political will. Neglecting the need to put financial resources into agencies like the Sexual Assault Support Centre of Waterloo Region will have a lasting impact on what my riding looks like today and how safe survivors will feel during the next few weeks. These organizations cannot rely on individual and community support to build a sustainability plan. That's not how you build a culture of consent. It is time for the PC government to do better. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Stormont Dundas, South Glengarry. Speaker. 
Because this past weekend, in my riding in Stormont Dundas in South Glengarry, we celebrated British Home Child Day and the plight and contribution of the 130,000-plus children who are part of the child emigration movement from Britain to Canada between 1869 and 1938. Orphan children and children in poverty were relocated as workers looking for, for a better future in Canada. One such child, Claude Nunny, was placed in my hometown in North Lancaster in 1905 at the age of 13 and became the most decorated Canadian in military history. In June of 1913, Claude enlisted as a private with the 59th Stormont and Glengarry Regiment. Claude was, uh, or Claude was awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal for his actions during the Battle of Vimy Ridge in April 1917, where he was wounded twice but continued fighting. Later that year, he was awarded the Military Medal for his greatest strength and courage in actions at Avion. He was hospital after being gassed in July of 1917. And on September 1, 1918, at the Durand-Quillan line, positions re recently captured by the Canadians were subject to heavy fire and counterattack. On his own initiative, Nani uh, left his company's main line and went forward through the artillery barrage to its outpost line, where he met with, from ran from position to position to encourage his comrades. The next day, Private Nani's exemplary conduct is helped to inspire his company to carry out his objective. He was severely wounded on that day and died on September 18, 1918. He was wounded with, he was awarded the Victoria Cross posthumously for the dash and steadfast example he showed during the battle. A stone monument was placed at the Township Hall in North Lancaster to celebrate Claude, Claude Nunning's achievements. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to stand today to share news that Dr. Donna Strickland of the University of Waterloo was awarded a Nobel Prize in Physics early this morning. Dr. Strickland's research in chirped pulse amplification, or CPA, has led to significant advancements in corrective eye surgeries. She is the first woman to be awarded this prize in 55 years, and only the third woman in history. This is a significant win, not only for Dr. Strickland, but for all women and girls who aspire to change the world through science. While women represent the majority of young university graduates, they are significantly underrepresented in the STEM fields, uh, regardless of their high school mathematics ability. Visibility and recognition are important. Women and girls need role models to see STEM as a place that they too could thrive. To quote Dr. Strickland, we need to celebrate women and women physicists because we're out there and hopefully in time it will start to move forward at a faster rate. Let's ensure that women don't have to wait another 55 years to be recognized for their contributions to STEM fields. Please join me today in congratulating Dr. Strickland, the first Canadian woman to win the Nobel Prize in Physics. Member statements. Member for Scarborough Agent Court. Mr. Speaker, in observance of Cyprus National Day, allow me to recognize and salute the 58th anniversary of the independence of the Republic of Cyprus. I extend warmest congratulations to the government and the people of Cyprus and pay tribute to Ontarians of Cypriot descent who have become an indelible part of our cultural fabric and whose contribution to the growth prosperity and vibrancy of our province is appreciated. We commemorate the deep bonds of friendship that exist between Ontario and the people of Cyprus. The support of the Cypriot Federation of Canada, Inc., and the High Commissioner of the Republic of Cyprus to Canada, His Excellency, Vasilou Filippou, are deeply appreciated. I look forward to further strengthening of our bilateral relations. We pay tribute to all those who lost their lives in the wars that took place in Cyprus, especially the 1974 invasion and occupation of Northern Cyprus. We also recognize the tremendous contribution of the Canadian Armed Forces and the 28 fallen Canadian soldiers serving under the UN peacekeeping forces in Cyprus. We extend our province's gratitude to all those who share this great heritage and whose accomplishments, struggles, and sacrifices continue to solidify Ontario's position 
as a region renowned for our commitment to tolerance, diversity, and multiculturalism. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. This, uh, this July 1st, the Progressive Conservative government opened up a huge loophole when it comes to vaping. Uh, vaping was supposed to be restricted. Promotion marketing was supposed to be restricted in Ontario. But in July 1st, they changed all of this. There is now a regulation in front of us uh, that basically would allow for the big tobacco company that owns those vaping products uh, to hook a new generation of kids on addicting vaping products, that is, the nicotine contained within the vaping pods in the vaping uh, products. Kids should not be exposed to the vaping industry, to the tobacco industry, marketing and promotion. Uh, we owe it to ourselves with everything we have done with Smoke Free Ontario to not take this huge step backward. We now know that Jube has a contract with the Shell gas station, so every convenience store will have those big advertising enticing children, youth, to try vaping. The amount of uh, youth in grade 10 and 12 uh, that have uh, that use vaping regularly is increasing uh, by 400% every year. We are uh, two years ago we were at about 15% of kids. Uh, now we are way higher than that. Uh, the government needs to. Uh, prohibit any vaping, marketing, advertising, or promotion that could be seen by our children. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to applaud the Royal Canadian Legion and its Bells of Peace initiative. Speaker, the Royal Canadian Legion was formed at the end of World War I, and it is fitting that this year it's reminding all Canadians to cast their minds to the sacrifices made by so many during and even after the horrible conflict. For a moment in time, Speaker, we're being asked to remember the elation that peace brought to the world at the end of hostilities in Europe and the costs to achieve it. Speaker, on November the 11th, 1918, church bells rang spontaneously in many countries, an outpouring of relief that war was finally over. Speaker, this year in Whitby and in so many municipalities across the country, bells will again ring out as the sun sets on November the 11th. At five-second intervals, they will sound 100 times, one for each year since the end of the Great War, honoring the men and women who served in its battles. Speaker, I congratulate the Royal Canadian Legion for its initiative and look forward to participating in ceremonies on November the 11th. Lest we forget, lest we forget. Thank you. Good. Member statements, the member for Kitchener, Conestoga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Oktoberfest has been a, uh, a long and rich history, both in Waterloo Region and abroad. What started as a Bavarian tradition has grown <coughs> into a global celebration. Oktoberfest celebrates German food, music, fashion, beer, and more. With Waterloo, yes, and schnitzel. <laughs> With Waterloo Region's strong German heritage, Oktoberfest has become a centerpiece of our fall calendar. This year's celebration marks the 50th anniversary of Kitchener Waterloo Oktoberfest, the largest Oktoberfest in North America. I'm excited to say that I will be participating in the opening ceremonies of this nine day festival, which officially kicks off on Friday, October 5th, and concludes on Saturday, October 15th. The not-for-profit organization in charge of organizing the event was founded in 1969 by a group of volunteers committed to contributing to the social and economic vitality of Waterloo Region, and boy have they ever. The festival runs every October and is operated by eight year-round full-time staff, over 450 volunteers, and 1,300 community and service club members. The festival will host the largest Thanksgiving Day Parade in Canada on Monday, October 8th. In addition to various celebrations at Fest Hall and throughout the nine days, there are over 40 family and cultural events, a little something for everyone. Celebrations such as Oktoberfest are essential for preserving the social fabric of our community, and to, they provide a great opportunity to showcase to the rest of the province and the country some of what Waterloo Region has to offer. So to uh, those community organizers and volunteers who have contributed so much of their time, money, and effort towards making this making sure that this year's Oktoberfest is the best one yet. I say danke schön, and thank you for taking part. Sure.
Thank you. That concludes our time for member statements this afternoon. Next, we have reports by committees.